Hey everybody, welcome to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology. We are uh, taking some time away from the class of 2022 this week and moving to the class of 2023, heading down to Orlando, Florida, and uh, one of the country's biggest offensive linemen in the class of 2023, that is Peyton Kirkland from uh, Dr. Phillips High School down there in Orlando. And Peyton, thank you for taking time to join the show. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing really well. Uh, let's uh, let's just not you know waste time with the chitter chatter here. Um, how has this last year been? I mean, as one of the highest ranked recruits in in your class, you've been sidelined like everyone else with um, you know being incapable of visiting places. Now that those sort of opportunities are reopening, and I mean, how how has this last year been? I mean, has it been tough? Yeah, um. Well, I say at first, you know, things were a little bit rough, but. As the year went on, I felt like things got pretty smooth and the quarantine actually was to my advantage. And I grew, developed a lot in this past year, and my knowledge of the game has really stepped up to the next level. You know, I think it's funny you mentioned that. A lot of kids have actually kind of echoed that sentiment, like you guys actually took some time to to get better at what you were doing because you had more time to spend on it than you would have normally, and you had a better opportunity to work on your bodies or go to the gym more often. I mean, is, is that easy to, to make, you know, a good thing out of that bad situation? Or was there a time in the beginning of all of this when you were like, man, what, what are we doing? Well, I feel like when things were a lot more strict, it was a little bit harder to, you know, to work and do a lot of things, hit gyms and stuff like that. But as it went on, I feel like things got a lot easier for me in the recruitment process. My recruitment process kind of was sped up in it, you know, I, I was at an advantage from it. You know, as a class of 2023 prospect, you still aren't able to really talk to coaches as much as you'd like. I'm sure there are still the restrictions on, on conversations, but how have you been able to to really develop good relationships with any of the schools that, uh, you know, you have 40 some offers at this point? How, how, how difficult has that been to just get to feel comfortable with coaches? Um, well, being that we were in, you know, quarantine and all that and, everything was kind of shut down, you kind of got a good opportunity to, you know, see how interested the schools really were into, you know, because being that we weren't able to, you know, come in person and visit, we were able to, you know, get on the phone calls and, you know what I'm saying, and get to see the coach's home life and all that. So I know one of those schools that you've spoken with frequently is Ohio State. It started with Tony Alford, the running backs coach who recruits the Orlando area. How is the relationship with Coach Alford? How is the relationship with, uh, more importantly, probably with Coach Deduara, the offensive line coach? How has that developed for you? Um, well, I say at first it was kind of really just getting to know each other. So it bloomed with Coach Alford. And um, Coach Alford kind of, you know, kind of introduced me to Coach Studd. And me and Coach Studd had, had a bond going on. And our relationship, you know, it veered a little bit from football, you know, so – being that I've had time these past, say, eight months to talk to be able to talk to Ohio State, it's um, it's been a, it's been a wild eight months, but you know I've learned a lot about the staff and the people around. So, you know, so so now that the dead period has an end in sight, we have a, a, what's going to be basically a thirty day window in the month of June, where it looks like you guys are going to be able to make visits to schools. I mean, how how do you plan on cramming in all of the visits that you need to in such a short time? Oh, uh, well, plan is to not be home for the entire month of June. So I'll be traveling the country with a couple other guys in June. So that's pretty much about it. I, that's actually something that I wanted to ask you about. I know that I've, I've conversations I've had with Luke Montgomery up here in Ohio, um, one of the 2023, you know, offensive linemen that has an Ohio State offer as well. Luke has made it a point to, to be pretty active in getting to know kids around the country. And I, I know that you're one of them that he's spoken with. How important is it for you to have other guys in your class that you can have those conversations with and that you can bounce, you know, information off of and the opportunity to, to go through this together? Um, really doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I'm making friends, but when it comes down to like a football standpoint or recruiting, it really doesn't mean anything to me because wherever I choose is not going to be because of somebody else. And what is it going to be about? I mean, what, what are the important things to you, Peyton, as you start to really break down the process? What do you think matters? Well, the main person that would be really affecting my decision is my mom. We'll be looking at everything. Well, 
rather than what I want to major in, you know, my plans post football and all that. Uh, you guys are not originally from Florida, correct? Correct. So you're a Midwest guy at heart. And I think that that's one of the reasons why some people, when they talk about you or they write about you, there's a, a belief that maybe you'd be more willing to leave the SEC or, or the, you know, the Southern schools. Did you grow up with any favorites? I mean, growing up in, in Illinois, who, who did you watch? Who, who are the guys that you sort of modeled your game after? Um, well, I, I really didn't model my game after anybody but Jadavion Clowney growing up because I played defensive end, tight end, and a whole bunch of positions growing up, up until high school. So growing up, I really watched Florida State, Ohio State, and Michigan State. Those were the three schools that I really watched growing up. Now, what is it about Ohio State? I mean, as a kid in Illinois, obviously – I know the Buckeyes are, are big everywhere, but in, in the Midwest specifically, what did you what did you see about them that that you found like, that made them some a school that you like to watch? I mean, it's just been the most dominant program in the Midwest over these past twenty some years. You know, so you, it, who who do you, who 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 do you watch now as an offensive lineman? Who who is it that you watch and that you're like, hey, that's someone that I could I can see a little bit of myself in. Um. <laughs> Trent Williams and Orlando Pace, also Jonathan Ogden. When you're talking about Orlando Pace, Jonathan Ogden, Trent Williams, these are guys that are not really recent players, so to speak. I mean, they're a little bit older. It, have you found it difficult to find like high quality video of Orlando Pace that isn't all grainy? And I mean, those those TVs in the '90s were pretty bad. Uh, well, yeah, it's been kind of hard to watch tape on Orlando Pace. But Jonathan Audi and Trent Williams have been pretty easier to watch. What is it about – what are you looking for with a coach? I mean, uh, as you start to break down these 40-some offers, what is it about uh, an offensive line coach that will make you say, hey, that that guy I relate to better than this guy? Is there – is it a personality? Is it a coaching style? What is it that you think is the most important piece of that? Um, Coaching style, the, the way I developed. Um, I also look at how offensive linemen have gone in there and came out. So. It'll be a big factor of the history. How many schools do you intend to see in June? What do you, what do you, I mean, you, are you starting to lay out a roadmap of where you're going to start and where you're going to finish? Um, yeah, I've already finished that. So I'll probably be hitting about, I think, 10 to 11 schools. Do you know the date that you're going to Ohio State yet? Um, it should be the 24th through the 26th. I'll be up there. What is it? I mean, as a kid who, again, isn't born and raised in Florida, you are familiar with, with the Midwest. Is there anything about this part of the country that you sort of miss and, and want to get back to? Um, Weather. You, you know, don't like the Florida heat? No, nah, I really don't like it. When did you move? When, when did you move to Florida? Um, I moved at the start of middle school. I mean, there's a lot of people, and I know that you big guys uh, specifically would prefer to be in the a little bit colder climate. But um, you know, has there been anything like you look at like Chicago style pizza or anything else that you're like, man, why don't we have that down in Florida? I mean, yeah, you, it's everything's pretty different than, than in Chicago, you know. So it's a different culture down here. You had to adapt. I had to adapt to it. I probably, probably didn't adapt to it until going into freshman year. How much has that sort of uh, ability to adapt helped you in this last year? Plus, where you know, there's a lot of kids who get really comfortable where, where things are always the same. But if you've already had to make those sort of big life adjustments in the last few years, did you find it easier when sort of things were falling apart everywhere else? Um, well, I feel like my character and my mentality changed a lot in this past year. So I've matured a lot, um, got stronger, bigger quicker than I was previously. So I feel like in all aspects of my life, I've had to grow and adapt in this past year. What is it about, you know, you specifically, you think that makes you a, a kid that 40 different colleges already have offered a scholarship to? Is there something specific in, in your in your game? Or what, what is the message from all these places? What, what do they tell you? I mean, well, the first thing that always sticks out on the film is just hot. So, you know, I have a great, I have a, pretty large frame compared to a lot of different compared to a lot of high school kids and um the way I dominate the game and you know the way I progressed in this past year kind of you know stands out on film doing my homework a little bit on you you had an uncle that played in at Jackson State is that correct 
Yes, sir. Has there been any conversation with you? I mean, Deion Sanders is the coach now at Jackson State, right? And someone who grew up watching Florida State. Do you have any thought in your mind as a, as a big time recruit? Is there any real conversation about, hey, why not go play at a place like Jackson State? Um, well, I'm really open to any school, to be honest. There is, I look at Jackson State just like I look at all the other schools that's offered me. I'm I'm actually kind of interested about the way that these sort of celebrity coaches, I guess. I mean, Eddie George now at Tennessee State. Um, you know, do you feel like those guys maybe understand you and, and, and players better than someone who hasn't played football recently or wasn't playing at a high high level? Um. Well, I feel like. Any coach that's played on a high level can understand their players. You know, if you have a history in football, then you can really understand what it's like being in our position. Ryan Day played at New Hampshire in, in college. He was certainly not a, a Deion Sanders level player, but have you had an opportunity to get to talk with Coach Day? And what, what has been your impression of him? Um, well, I really haven't had an opportunity to talk to Coach Day, but I'll probably be talking to him before I go before I go visit that's kind of the challenge right now, I guess, right? I mean, because you have such limited time to talk to each coach or each program, you almost have to always stick with your position coaches. And so it's probably a little bit difficult to get to know the head coaches in every school right now, right? Um, yeah, yes, sir. So what is, what's, what's it been like just getting back on the road? You went to, did you go to Florida State for their spring game? Uh, no, I went for an open practice. It was like open scrimmage. When you get a chance to get into a stadium now and get an opportunity to watch these schools in person, like what are you watching as a as a recruit? Um, I'm really looking at. Well, I've looked at how the coaches coach. You know, how they communicate with their players on the sideline, and I definitely look at my position group and see what techniques they're learning. I know that there's been some discussion with you from other people in the last couple of weeks that you're not operating on any sort of actual recruiting timeline that you feel like you could commit at any time if it's the right place. Do you have um, a set of like a checklist of something that a school needs to check off before you know that it's the right spot for you? Um. Well, yeah, actually, it's really more school related than it is football related. What, what do you want to study? What, what is it that you look at and say, hey, that's if football doesn't work out, this is what I want to do? Well, I kind of want to intern as a coach, you know, kind of be a GA or something like that. Or I kind of, you know, want to be in the coaching and sports, sports casting and all that post football. Yeah. Well, there's a, a lot of stuff on your plate, I'm sure. So I, I wanted to, you know, make sure I reached out and say thank you for taking some time with us. I appreciate you being patient when we had a slight audio uh, malfunction there, but um, we will hopefully get a chance to see you on campus at Ohio State in June. Uh, we don't know exactly what uh, from the media if we're going to get to be around any of those things because nobody knows anything. But uh, that's Peyton Kirkland. I'm Jerry Birmingham. This has been Barmanology and Letterman Row. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll be back uh, with another top Ohio State prospect next week.